Hello, hello, I'm Beth Joey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. This is a channel where I paint my face, turn my camera on and talk about books. So at 10 p.m. last night, I realized that I had a video due to be uploaded at 5 p.m. today and I hadn't filmed anything. So it was a very, very early start this morning to do a mad rush to get a five book reading update filmed in time for my Thursday release. So I hope Fingers crossed this goes out on time. And I mean, I've read seven books since my last five book reading update, so I think it's probably about time, otherwise I'm gonna fall behind and it's all gonna like explode in my mind. And anyway, this is a five book reading update. The first book that I'm going to mention in this video is one that I borrowed from my library, so I don't have on me anymore, and that is Heart on Fire by Amanda Boucher. This is the third book in the Kingmaker Chronicles trilogy, and unfortunately for me, the most disappointing book in the trilogy. I really expected big things because I'd liked the first two quite a bit, but this one just let the whole team down. If you haven't already seen in my previous videos, which I will link up above, what the Kingmaker Chronicles series is about, it follows Kat, who is a Kingmaker and Sooth. This means that she has a few abilities and powers that would be particularly beneficial to kings, courts, kingdoms, all that fun stuff, including control over lightning, control over water, she got like some powers from the gods and stuff, she's able to discern truth from lies, so you know, super useful powers. The book starts with Kat sort of hiding away in a circus because she's trying to escape her tyrannical mother, who is a ruler of one of the sections of the land. When she is kidnapped by Griffin, aka Beta Sinter, which means he is second in charge in his particular particular kingdom. And him and his kingdom is essentially just trying to create equality in the land. They're trying to make everybody live together harmoniously and sort of remove these tyrannical rulers who are keeping everybody like in separate like factions and humans imprisoned and all those sorts of things. So as for Heart on Fire, I gave this book two stars and that is because I simply didn't think it needed to exist. I think this series could have been a duology. They could have finished it with a couple extra chapters at the end of the second book rather than creating a whole book where pretty much nothing happens. Quick spoiler warning here, this book started with a bang just like the rest of Amanda Boucher's book in the, books in this series has done in the past for me with Pierce's betrayal and obviously the god coming down and taking him away. But the rest of the book just seemed like Amanda Boucher was trying to create too many big gasp moments where you go, oh my god, I can't believe that just happened. Except when there's one after the other, after the other, after the other, they completely lose all impact so none of the gasp moments were really that gasp worthy. Also the whole plot line of the book just felt incredibly repetitive because it was a case of just Kat finding a new power, then facing up against her mother, being defeated, losing some level of power or confidence, saved by Griffin or by a god, and then rinse and repeat. Lastly, the entire Tartarus plotline at the end of the book was completely unnecessary. I feel like it was a big setup for the next book, which is sort of a companion series to this one, rather than anything that really stood in its own right and added any value or benefit to the storyline or to the big battle sort of at the end, which was probably the biggest letdown of a battle I've ever seen. I was expecting this big battle scene, this amazing, incredible conflict between the humans and the rulers with magical powers, and I was really interested about how like the humans would overcome the fact that they didn't have any powers against this big tyrannical ruler, but it never really happened and they just tried to have a redemption plotline for this big tyrannical ruler and it just made no sense. I gave this book two stars. I don't know whether I'm going to continue with the series when the next book comes out. The second book in this video is The Appeal by Janice Hallett, which I do own, but I have lent out to a friend, so I don't have it with me. I gave this book three stars, which meant it's not amazing, not horrible, it just kind of sat in the middle. I generally enjoyed it, but it wasn't anything, you know, to call home about. The Appeal follows an amateur theatre group called the Fairway Players, who are trying to put on a play called All My Sons in order to raise some money for some life-saving cancer treatment for the daughter of one of the people in the play. The entire story is told through mixed media, which if you know me, you know I love that, and you are told at the very beginning of the story that a murder has taken place, but the wrong person is in prison for it potentially, and these two law students are trying to figure out what happened. So they're combing through these Fairway Players emails, trying to figure out, one, whether this cancer treatment is a scam and a con for money or if it is real, two, who the potential murder suspect is, and three, who actually got murdered in the damn first place. As for my thoughts on this, whilst I do love a good mixed media book, this didn't really feel super mixed media to me because it is told almost entirely through emails. However, every now and then you did get a little text chain from the two law students, Femi and Charlotte, who are investigating the case, where they check in with you and it feels very interactive as they sort of run you through the previous 
section of the book that you've just read, the key things that you should be pulling out and potentially some things to look forward to or to look for in the following section. I didn't love that the book was basically small town gossip until page 280, especially because that book only actually had 445 pages, so you were well over halfway through before anything of consequence actually happened, before any murder actually happened, and the whole story was kind of sold as a murder mystery, so I don't know if that's mismarketing or if that's just it's taking a bit longer to explore the characters. The character development, I will say, was top tier, but it was it was just a bit too long for me. There was a bit too much focus on the gossipy small town vibes rather than any actual action happening. Like I said, I gave this book three stars, not because I didn't love it, not because I didn't hate it. It was just generally enjoyable. To go for something completely different to what I would usually read, I picked up Diddly Squat by Jeremy Clarkson, which is a book that Ben bought me, and it follows Jeremy Clarkson trying to come to terms with being a farmer and realizing that he's absolutely horrible. At it. Jeremy Clarkson, in case you are not aware, was one of the original hosts of the Top Gear show. I grew up with that show, so this this book definitely held a, a place in my heart just based on the fact that it followed someone I grew up watching on TV. But no one tells the blurb better than him, so I'm just going to read you a brief section of the blurb which says, Faced with suffocating red tape, biblical weather, local objections, a global pandemic, and his own frankly staggering ignorance of how to do farming, Jeremy soon realises that turning the farm around is going to take more than splashing out on a massive tractor. Fortunately, there's help at hand from a large and mostly willing team, including girlfriend Lisa, Caleb the tractor driver, cheerful Charlie, Ellen the shepherd, and Gerald, his head of security, and drystone waller. Between them, they enthusiastically cultivate cop crops, rear livestock and hens, keep bees, bottle spring water and open a farm shop, but profits remain elusive. I gave the book five stars and as for my thoughts it was an incredibly funny, humorous, politically incorrect at times read. To be honest for a fair portion of it I believe it would have people of my generation screaming out for Jeremy Clarkson to be cancelled because his sense of humour is blunt, practical and as I said before politically incorrect so it's quite jarring at times but in the absolute most hilarious way Jeremy Clarkson simply doesn't care and he just wants to comment on the regulations that he faced at the time and he teaches you a bit of, as well about what it's like to be a farmer when all the consumers buying your goods obviously want cheap food but you're just trying to make a living make ends meet just generally this was a really fun read so yeah I gave it five stars next up for a complete change of pace I read Killing for Company the case of Dennis Nilsson by Brian Masters for this one, I'm going to read the blurb because as it is based on a true story and it's a rather heavy hitting subject, I don't want to get anything wrong. So I'm just going to read, uh, and it says, On 9th of February 1983, Dennis Nilsson was arrested at his Muswell Hill home after human remains had been identified as the cause of the streets blocked drains. Within days, he had confessed to 15 gruesome murders committed over a period of four years. His victims, all young homosexual men, had never been missed. Brian Marston, with... Brian Masters, with Nilsson's full cooperation, has produced a unique account of the murderer's mind. Killing for Company is a groundbreaking criminal study of the serial killer and necrophiliac known as the Muswell Hill Murderer, and one of the most shocking books you will ever read. And shocking is the right word for it, because it is blunt. It makes a point at the very beginning of the book that they're not going to evoke emotion when they tell the story. They're just going to say how it is, even if the language is jarring. And it definitely does that, but it makes it incredibly difficult to read. So I gave the book two stars. Obviously, because the topic itself isn't enjoyable, this isn't something that you read to be enjoyed. It's something you read to learn and to understand criminal psychology, both in the case of Dennis Nilsson and the understanding of criminal psychology in the 19th 1980s as well. But what I found really interesting was the areas in which this book was quite outdated. For example, in this time, homosexuality was still considered to be like a deviant trait. But there were also elements of the understanding of the criminal mind that I think were quite outdated as well, simply because either society had moved on from that belief or because science had proved it wrong. And then because of reading that hellishly horrible to read but incredibly informative book that was very very dense I knew that I needed something easy and quick that I could rush through pretty quickly and just enjoy and so I picked up Lore Olympus by Rachel Smythe which is a graphic novel that I believe was originally um, posted on webtoon but then is since been like published in various volumes. Lore Olympus is a graphic novel retelling of the love story between Hades and Persephone told in sort of a modern context so everybody has phones and there's you know, pubs and bars and clubs and everything like that. Persephone is the young goddess of spring who has sort of been sheltered all her life by her mother and she's finally making her way out into the world and living with Artemis. Persephone then goes to a party where she bumps into Hades and then through a mysterious turn of events he ends up sort of saving her and taking her back to his house and they get to know each other, sparks fly, all that lovely sort of thing. But at the end of the day, Persephone is naive and innocent in a world ruled by self-indulgent and manipulative gods, and so she faces a number of struggles as she comes to terms with 
the powers at play and the way that these men can manipulate and control her. Lore Olympus I gave three stars. Again, just a book that I enjoyed and I had a lot of fun with, but not particularly something to ring home about. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't bad either. The first issue that I found with it was my own issue, which is that I compare every graphic novel since reading Heartstopper to Heartstopper because that was just such a five star standout read for me and nothing else is going to compare but that's unfair on every other book to keep comparing them. Lore Olympus was the easy and charming read that I needed it to be but I also found it incredibly confusing at times because it would swap perspectives without announcing the pers perspective that it was jumping into but then you'd also get like a time relapse sort of thing as it swapped into that perspective so 99% of the time I didn't know whose pers perspective I was reading from what events were occurring based on what events had just occurred, or generally where I was in the story. And then the final thing I have to say about the book is the illustrations themselves are absolutely incredible. I love the way that the colours would bleed into each other, how you'd see these little blurrings of colour there as characters would connect. The illustrations just just made the book intensely more enjoyable because you felt like intense emotions as the illustrations sort of portrayed levels of connection and uh, and fear and all those sorts of things at certain times. I'm definitely going to pick up the next volumes when they eventually come out. I believe there's one later on this year and maybe one early next year so yeah I'm not going to read them on webtoon. I want the hardback copies because I, reading them on webtoon I, I, I don't like because the format goes all weird on my phone so yeah, hardback copies only. Those are the five books that I have read most recently. I think there's been a good variation there of different sorts of books. I read two nonfiction, which is incredibly weird for me. I don't read any nonfiction. And spoiler for my next five book reading update and for my March reading update, I read a lot more nonfiction this month and I'm kind of weird about it because I don't read any usually. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the books that I have read so far. If you have read them, if you've loved them, if you hated them, all those sorts of things, just come chat to me down below. As always, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified when I release new content, and I will see you lovely people in my next video. Bye!